The One Micronesia podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Half a day at Mogasin, and in this case, Rananim, and welcome to the One Micronesia podcast. I know, the look is kind of like, whoa, what is happening here? What, what happened to the Zoom? We throw the, we deleted the Zoom app. I'm just kidding. We love you, Zoom. But we, we kind of want to switch it up here. I mean, we're, we're slowly getting into uh, what we, we used to call somewhat of a normalcy. So we're getting back into that. So I thought, you know, why not you know, do a face-to-face? And actually, he kind of kind of pushed to like, hey, you want to do a face-to-face? I'm like, you know what? Why not? We're, the island is slowly opening up. Of course, you know, we got to follow different protocols, but hey, we got this. So I was like, you know what? I got to do this. And why not meet face-to-face with the guy who took, it was not the size of a flag, a, a bigger flag, a more <laughs> legit, uh, more official uh, FSM flag. And he took it around the track at the opening ceremony of the one, the only Tokyo 2020. So, ladies and gentlemen, with me here today on the podcast, who I'm grateful and to have here is Scott James Fitty. Bro, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I was honored to be here. <laughs> so, um, if you don't know, he is, is the is the FSM official sprinter who represented um, the, the country to uh, the Tokyo Games, and you know we're going to talk about his experiences uh, in Tokyo. That's a big experience to have. I mean, it is. He went to it. Is this going to be your second Olympic? No, first. First, first Olympic. First so, Olympic. Wow. So if you watched the previous episode of the podcast, we interviewed the swimmer who represented the FSM at the Olympics, uh, the one, the only Miss uh, Tayana Adams, who did a, a, an amazing job, also broke the FSM record in her, um, in her uh, swimming. So that was amazing, too. I got to talk with her, and I was like, you know what? I have to get some one-on-ones with these guys. So Scott is back here in Guam. Who, so you live here, right, on Guam? I live here on Guam. That's awesome. So, Scott, let's start it. I think it's, I've been talking so way too much. I think people want to get to know you. And the, the FSM uh, community here on Guam and also around the world want to know who represented them to the game. So let's start with you. Tell us more about you. Okay. Hi. Um, I'm Scott. Uh, Scott James PD. Um, I'm from Chuk. I'm 26 years old. And uh, I was one of the athletes that went to the previous Olympic 2020 Tokyo. And there was a lot of experience back there. Okay, there was sure. a lot. So, uh, Scott, before we get to, to Tokyo, it's going to be a huge chunk of our talk today. But before we get there, um, let's tell the people, like, how, when did you, at one point in your time, like, oh, you fell in love with the sport? Wow. That was a long time ago. Um, 2013, mm-hmm. that's the time I started running. I mean, uh, sprinting. Mm-hmm. But before that, I was, I was a mid-distance from 2010. I started running mid distance and you know I couldn't get anything but uh, my coach trying to change out you know my mm-hmm. event so I f- slowly moving into 100 Peter mm-hmm. and it worked uh, first meet I was one of the top wow top runner from my island so in Chuk, I am from a different island mm-hmm. of Torowas hey, I'm me. from Torowas Kuchua nice yeah so, I mean, that's amazing. I think if, if you're from the FSM, it's, it's very competitive. You know, it's very competitive, the FSM, if, when, especially when it starts with the FSM Games. You know, that's a smaller game, yes. you know, the FSM Games, where it's just the four states who come and compete. But it's always, everybody knows across the board, every time it comes to track and field, it's always Chuck. You, Chuck is always in the, is, is, that, is the leader in track and field. And, and I've, I it went to, <laughs> to Savior High School, and trust me, when it comes to track and field day, it's one of the most celebrated events on Chuk and people go crazy the, all the high schools from Chuk come yep. together to compete so I know how big track and field is in Chuk so seeing you from Chuk represent us in a sport that's so famous back home in Chuk I think it's it's very amazing man yes if I'm not mistaking um, I think I was the first first um, track runner to ever won the Keitani and first annual track meet High school track meet. That's right. The the Keitani, uh, you know, he was such a, a very big uh, part to the track and field back in Chuk. I mean, I, I I met him one time when I went, I was in the school in Chuk, and he when he passed away, he did that. He also was big in the wrestling yes. back home in Chuk. So you know, so it, it, there's so much around the sports, and and I think the the main key what I want to really emphasize is the fact that the Chuk really. Uh, when they're um, concentrated on one sport, they'll really go all in. Like the family members yes. will be there. The support is there. Support. Especially when we comes always to have the hundred percent support from, especially like where you're from, yes, mm-hmm. back home. 
Man, that's amazing. Um, you know, um, I wanted to, to just put these two together because now we're talking aftermath. This is after your competition in Tokyo. So I'm going to add another segment uh, coming up in just a little bit. So before we kind of close this one off, let's talk about, um, so you wanted to pursue uh, track and field. Uh, let's talk about that and your, your, now your mentality has changed. Now you're just not competing on the small level. You, now you're, 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 you're out there and you're competing and you're representing the FSM. How does that feel? Oh, amazing. Like, just to be on the field carrying, you know, the FSM flag, wearing an FSM running shirt. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, uh, it's just amazing. You saw the world, you know, uh, they don't know where is Micronesia, especially, mm -hmm. and then you're there, represent, and present where is Micronesia. Those kind of things is, like, important, like, like to me. That's awesome, man. And, and like I said, um, you know, let's talk about your, your first ever meet the first ever time you represented I, I know it wasn't the, this is like you said this is your first olympic so let's talk about the different competitions well, that you the you've, first uh, the first meet i was the first meet that i went off island uh, i was competing at the ocean here wow uh 18 and under that was 2013. Nice. uh 2013 that was in tahiti french wow. Indonesia. how was that feeling a young kid now you're, re you're you know you're you're, you're repping the four stars how, how was, what was that feeling for you like walking around and, and especially when you you're, you need to get your mind into to game mode right to get concentrated well uh i think uh that feeling was like i feel because uh, i was the youngest and i feel like i was hungry for it i want more and more nice. more race but yeah i finally i that's where my journey started all the way to 2020. Wow. You know, yeah. guys, we're, we're going to talk about 2020. Like I said, it's going to take a whole chunk of this interview because it's a very important, very, you know, we've seen it. We're still seeing it on TV today, you know, as the, the games come to a close. So we're going to talk about that coming up in just a little. Remember, you're watching the One Mike Indonesia podcast. We're going to take a break. And this podcast will be brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. gets better with more. Customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile, phone, and TV to your bundle with Business Bundles Plus. Docomo Pacific Business. Work better together. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. And we are back. You're watching the One Micronesia podcast being brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. So we're still here with the one, the only, who represented the FSM at the world stage, the World Olympics. And he represented... Uh, he represented the country very well. We've seen it. We've seen the accomplishments that he did. So I'm here with uh, track runner uh, Scott James Fiti. Uh, Scott, man, bro, thank you again for the time. I got to say thank you for the shirt. And I mean, I mean I'm here <laughs> sitting here, people watching like, man, did Vic go to Tokyo? Yeah. Like, since when, you know? But thank you so much, man. It means a lot. I mean, I have, now I have a souvenir from Tokyo, guys. So thank you for the shirt. Thank you for the flags. Man, I've always wanted to have these, you know, miniature flags just to have it around the desk. Um, but... At, at the same time, thank you for, for representing us. You know, millions of people watched NBC and the opening ceremony, and they were just like, what are, who are those guys? What country do they come from? Now people are slowly Googling, you know, uh, FSM, and then Guam came out. Oh, where is Guam? Or, you know, where is Palau? Where is the Marshall Islands? So I think you guys went out there and did a great job in representing Micronesia as a whole. So thank you once more. Thank you. Um, so let's get to it. Let's talk about it. What was it like getting the call? And when was it? Did you get the call that, hey, you're going to be representing the FSM? I did. Uh, that was back in 2018 uh, after the micro game. That's the time uh, the FSM and OC mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sent me that email that I'm the chosen one to represent wow. Micronesia at the Olympics. I was just excited. Like, I can't wait. 
Wow. So, man, the, I, I'm pretty sure the feelings were just like happiness. And, and you told your family, how, what was their reaction? They were happy, um, especially my family back in Tokyo, because, you know, I have also family back there. But, yeah, they were just like, oh, wow, you're going to be the first one, first one in the family to reach, reach that far, the Olympics. Man, it was far. And we saw you on TV, bro. That's, yeah. That was huge. So let's talk about it. So now you've got the call. Okay, I'm going to Tokyo 2020, and I'm going to represent the FSM. Let's talk about the training process. Well, it was a pretty rough road for us when the uh, pandemic hit. Yeah, and uh, we, had, we had to stop for almost an, an, one year. Wow. And uh, we finally moved back slowly. We, we kind of catch up with our training, but it's too hard. Uh, some of the facilities, like uh, training uh, venues here on Guam, we're not allowed to go on, especially the tracks. Uh, the gyms uh, are very limited. Uh, that's pretty much it. It, it was a rough road mm -hmm. for us when the pandemic hit. So when, because of course we went into lockdown, right? So now nobody can use these facilities. So at one point in time, were you, uh, it, were you given the authorizations? Okay, you can use it, but I know you can use it, but now it's like, oh, you can use it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and stuff like that. Well, the was track, no, no. How, so what did you do? Like, um, so sports complex, that's where I train okay. on that crash mm -hmm. field. Yeah. It's wide open, but sometimes, uh, you know, there's people there and mm -hmm. you have to keep that, you know, following the uh, public health guideline. So that's crazy. So, so now you're not training at a 100% which you wanted to because obviously you're yeah. getting ready for the, one of the, the biggest meet of all time, right? So how was that? Was it, how was that? Because I know it's challenging. Like, so what was going through your head? Like, are you like, man, I'm just not ready. I want to give up. Like, were those I, things going through your head? Well, uh, I, you know, uh, I wasn't ready to give up, but, uh, you know, I heard that it's postponed. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I was just kind of, you know, nervous or it's going to be sad for me if they, they don't allow, you know, they don't want the team Micronesia to be part of the game, but mm -hmm. it happened. So, so, the, so now you're just, like, we know the, 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 the Harmon field, I mean, the, the Harmon complex, it's, you know, like you said, like you, people walk there during the pandemic, so now you're running, you're, you're making sure you're, you know, the distance is there, but you're not training on, in a, a regulated for a track and field, no. right? So now you're like, you can't do sprints that you want to do. You can't do other workouts that you used to do. So that's hard. And a lot of, I think we watched so many interviews during the, the Olympics that a lot of athletes said that like 2020 was a really bad year because it just, you know, it stopped people from, from working out. So do you think if you would have not, if you've had, you know, all these facilities open, through 2020, but prior to the, the games, do you, would you say like you would have more confident and, and would have done better? Yes, I, I would have done better with those you know training facilities. Especially, you need to run on the track and you know get used to mm -hmm. the track. Because it, like it's at the, the 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 park up here, it's either you're on the sidewalk or you're on the grass. On the grass, right? Yes. I mean, of course, you know, back back home in Chuk, like training on the grass was always something that it was. It, yeah, you train on the grass, you get faster, and you know, you go run on the sand. All these, you know, all these little things that people say, right? But you have to have that feeling for the track, right? I think when you're on the track, you, you, you it's going to be like the same as there. So that's where you push yourself more, right? Yeah. And that's crazy. I mean, like I said, everybody went through a, a whole lot in 2020. But I think it's the fact that you guys pushed through. And I wanted one of the reasons why when I talked to uh, Tayana in the previous episode of the One Mind podcast, she said the same thing. But for her, she went through uh, a lot because she lost. She was in Pompeii. She was training in Pompeii. She lost her coach. The facilities closed down. Nobody wanted to open any swimming pool. So that she had to fly to Hawaii with her. So she took her one of her parents, and then now she left her other siblings with only one parent. So it was it was really hard for her. But honestly, at the end, of, I think at the end of the day, you guys definitely showed up, and you showed up with pride and competed all the way. And I think that, and if you're watching right now, I think that means a lot. So definitely proud of you guys, and thank you guys so thank much. You. So let's talk about it. opening ceremony, man. Wow. <laughs> the emotions, everybody, the world is watching, and also prior to that, we found out that you. And Tayana were to bear the FSM flag. What yeah. was that feeling to know that you're there to compete, but at the same time they're like, hey, here's an opportunity. 
go out there and represent your country? Well, it was an honor to carry that flag wow. in front of millions or billions of people are watching, even though they're not at the stadium mm -hmm. or they're not there. But we know that the opening ceremony, it's going to be more like, like I said, millions and billions of people are watching us. And uh, it was an honor. And I, when I had that call that I'm going to be one of the flag bearers, I was like, one, why, how many flag bearers they were this year? And then they told me that it's two flag bearers. It's all about the equality, something wow. like that. So I was like, okay, wow. Uh, I was just, I was just happy, like you know, carrying that flag in front of millions of people are watching you, and I know carrying a flag it means a lot. So, uh, yeah. For sure, man. That's, that's, that's a crazy experience, bro. And I mean, you, you went out there and you did your best, bro. And so let's talk about it. You, opening ceremony is done. Now, the, the, the training, you're back on the track, you're training for your, your meet. Let's talk about the, the first day. Or let's talk about the, the main event when you, com you first competed. What was going through your head or, you know, while you, when you took the track with some of the world's, not some of the world, the world's greatest? Well, uh, well uh, we were... Yeah, we were the first at least to try out the blocks. Wow. Guam, Kiribati, Palau, and Jamaica. Whoa. Yeah, we were the first one to try out the blocks. So, yeah, it was just amazing. I had this, uh, you know, excite excitement just pop off from everywhere, you know. It's just, it's just different than my previous race. Right? It's, yeah. Now it's different. Now it's, you're like, oh, man. Was the pressure more now? Or was it you're just like, eh, I got this? Yeah. I keep telling myself uh, before my race, you know, the race day, when we left the room and, you know, I keep telling myself that do not fall start or disqualify. Mm -hmm. Just focus. That's all I want. But, yeah, uh, my main goal is, just to run in one of those lanes, mm -hmm. and that's it. Finish wow. job. And you did, and you I, did. I did. You I did, did amazing. Yeah. Wow. Let's talk about your time. So did you, is, was this a new time for you, or was no, it? It was in a, it was in a personal best, mm -hmm. but it's just a season best okay. for me. But I'm still happy. I'm still proud of myself. I mean, you talk about, you know, going through a lockdown. Now everything is closed. So when you say season's best, I think people watching right now, they should know that that's, that's something to, that's a big takeaway because you struggled through the training, but then you got there. You showed up and you're like, you know what, 2020, I'm looking at you. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to affect my competition. You, you push through and you be your season's best. I mean, you, you did your season's best. So that's, I think that's a, a big win for everybody, especially you. Yeah. So, guys, um, we're going to take a break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, the future for Scott and his career. And we'll be right back. You're watching the One Micronesia Podcast. and we be brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. gets better with more. Customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile, phone, and TV to your bundle with Business Bundles Plus. Docomo Pacific Business. Work better together. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Half a day, Mogisin, in this case, Rananim. Welcome back to the One Micronesia Podcast. We brought to you by Docomo Pacific, Better Together. All right, so Scott, man, what a crazy experience you went through. We talked about you know, how it all started for him. And then we talked about the games and how it was crazy, the preparations, the day of, and how exciting it was, the opening ceremony, the whole shebang. What an amazing thing you did, man. And you, you went out and you showed up and you showed up with pride, a lot of pride. 
And I think that's one of the key things about us Islanders as, you know, we, whenever we're tasked to do something, we never give up. We never back down. We just show up and do it to our very best and show pride. And I think Micronesia as a region has that and I think definitely showed at the game. So let's talk about that before we talk about the future. Let's talk about the different uh, island nations. Because when I talked to Tayana, she was like, when we're here at the world stage, it's not about Micronesia. It's not, you know, it's not about... It's not about FSM or Guam or Saipan or, or, or it's, it's about Oceania as a whole. And I think, so tell us more about that relationship where, where you, of course, you bonded with everybody from Micronesia. And I know you guys had a great bond with Guam and, and Palau and Marshalls, right? But how about the other island nations who were there? Let's talk about that bond and that friendship. Well, you know, I've been through a lot of games mm-hmm. and they know me. So uh, same thing as my previous race, we all you know each other, you know, um, but some of the new, you know, the new, uh, new runners or athletes, but they, that, I don't know, it's just different. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about it. The future of Scott James Fitti. Let's talk about um, what's, what's next for you. Well, next will be the World Champ, Championship in Oregon, and uh, South Pacific minigame, Neighbor Island, Saipan. Wow. So that's uh, one, you said one is going to be in a year, right? Yes. And that will be the, the world championship. So what's now that you you're done with the you're done you're off the track in Tokyo in Tokyo, you're concentrating on that. Let's talk about what, what you got planned, the training process and stuff. Uh I might stick with the same routine mm-hmm. but it would be better if, you know, they allow us to go on the track this time. Awesome. Yeah. You you said you did your season's best, right? In in Tokyo. So what's a what's that record? What what's something you want to beat? What's that time? Let's talk about you know when it comes to hundred meters, we talk about seconds, right? So what's that time you want to beat? Let's say at the world world uh, championships. Well, my main goal is you know to set a new new record for the Micronesian athlete. Where are we at right now currently? Uh, I think I'm the second 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 fastest. And Balau is still holding the record. So so what's the time? 10, 10, 40, 40, 10, 40. Yeah. That's, that's fast. It I mean, we're fast. seeing the, yeah. the world's best at nine. I mean, we're going to get there. That's coming soon. Yeah. Watch out, world. We're coming for you in your nine seconds. But it's big. I think we have to do it record, uh, record at a time. Break that record one, you know, one record at a time, and we're definitely going to get to that nine. So that's amazing, man. So you're definitely going to push yourself. Um, let's talk about some of the takeaways from, uh, from Tokyo. Um, what were the things, maybe competition-wise, that you did, maybe that you, now you're like, okay, that's what, that's what mistake I did that I need to correct or stuff like that. that you want for, so that way, when you get to your next one at the World Championships, you're kind of like, okay, no, that's what I did wrong. This is what I need to do. To be honest, nothing really goes wrong, mm-hmm. uh, but it's just, you know, all, all training, like, you mm-hmm. know, like I said, pandemic hit and it's, it's really, it's really a rough road for us. So it's amazing. And then let's talk about it. Uh, The world knows now that the next one is in 2024. It's going to be in Paris. Will we see Scott James Fitti? Well, it depends. It it really depends on uh, FSM and OC. Okay. I think they got you. We we had to wait for uh, the next micro game because that's where they pick the next. It was going. That's, that's awesome, man. And, you know, before we kind of close out here, um, what are, so are you looking to maybe if they open up the track, of course you're going to do your training. Are you going to uh, help out also? Because there are many young uh, FSM uh, kids here in Guam who love running. Is that something you want to go back and, and try to help the yeah, community out? Um, you know, uh, I've been part of the FAS, uh, the FAS group. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it would be nice. We use sport. To get busy with sport and doing, you know, other 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 things, you know, it happens here on Guam. Hmm. Yes, and we've seen it with a lot of things. I, I know the FSM Association and the Manyatlu and the MRN and Mr. Cost have done so much yeah. with the police department, with the kickballs and all these tournaments, right? So that's uh, that's something that's amazing that's happening, and you know, and obviously, I think you've been a part of it too. So. That's awesome. So, guys, we're going to take a break. But when we come back, we'll pretty much close out the interview and, and hear his last messages and where you can follow him and follow his journey. Uh, so uh, we'll be back right after this. It only- 
only gets better with more. Customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile, phone, and TV to your bundle with Business Bundles Plus. Docomo Pacific Business. Work better together. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. And we are back, the One Micronesia Podcast. It's being brought to you by Docomo Pacific, Better Together. So the last part of it here with the one, the only, the dude, the guy who represented you on the world stage in Tokyo 2020. He's back here. And I think, like I said, it's, it's such an, an honor to have you on the podcast, knowing that those feet right there, like, <laughs> stepped on the tracks that, you know, many of the world's fastest had, you know, had stepped on. So I think that's already an honor. You know, you being here with me is, is and, you know, just being here is just an amazing thing. So, again, thank you. And thank you for what you and the three others, and you and every other, I think, Micronesian athlete did in Tokyo. And I think, of course, you know, we didn't get to where we wanted but at the end of the day, I think being there, showing up and, and showing the world that, hey, we have some flags. We have a four-star. We have a Guam flag. We have Palau. We have Marshall Islands. Hey, we got flags and we, you know, whatever you throw at us, we'll show up and we'll definitely show out. So you guys definitely did that. Um, now, Scott, before we close out here, a message to, let's start with a message to your family. Yeah, um, I just want to say thanks for all the support. And um, without all the support from you, uh, especially my parents, you know, my parents back home, my, my family, my friends here on Guam, even my co-worker, my boss. Uh, without that support, I wouldn't have gone this far. Thank you, guys. That's awesome. And then now, a message to your country. Four stars. You, re- you held, like I said, a way bigger, more official size than this, but you did. You held it, and you, you went like this at the, the, the World Olympic, the, the opening ceremony. Talk to your country right now, a message to them. Um, you know, training, it's not easy. Being an athlete, it's not easy. But when it comes to world, mm-hmm. you know, I keep telling myself, as a Micronesian athlete, it's not all we win or lose, but it's how we participate. Yeah. There you go. Well, before we let you go, uh, where can people follow you? Where can people follow your journey? Um, Facebook. Uh, Instagram, you can follow me, Scott Tapes, Fiji. And he has a TikTok too, guys. Did you guys know that? He has a TikTok. So, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about, you know, before we close a little about your TikTok. So, wow, you... that TikTok went, uh, some of my video went, you know, viral mm-hmm. on, uh, when I was back there, just showing the background of the Olympic village mm-hmm. and the, you know, and I've already hit more. I always have followers every day, so yeah. If you guys can follow me, uh, Scott James Fitty. So it's pretty much everywhere. Just look for, type in Scott James Fitty and just follow him on pretty much all the platforms and follow his journey. Like I said, he's got a lot more coming up. Uh, the World Olympics in Oregon and then uh, Micro Games in Saipan. So um, I'll have to follow and a lot to see. So it's, so it's going to be interesting to see how this guy grows and, and continues to represent uh, either his home island of Chuk or the FSM on the world stage. Scott, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, that pretty much wraps up another episode of the One Micronesia Podcast. Be brought to you by Docomo Pacific. My name is Victorious, and I just want to say peace. The One Micronesia Podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together.